When something weird happens to someone, if it's odd or otherworldly, people don't usually mention it. This is because of the fear or knowledge that they will be laughed at, ridiculed, or humiliated. But sometimes, it's something that just has to be done. Such was the case that happened to me last week. I work construction for a small outfit, and I was assigned, with one other worker, James, to string temporary lighting in the sub-basement of an old building in the middle of an old city, one that I will not name here, in preparation for a future remodel. It was just me and him tasked with the job, as it wouldn't take very long. I know already that some of these sub-basements connect to other buildings via subterranean passageways or crossing spaces. And while we worked down there, I had recognized and been curious of one of these tunnels to my left. Once James stopped for a break, I decided to not only go and smoke a marijuana joint, but also do some exploring at the same time. So. I crept with only a lighter's light to guide me into that old crossing space. But I soon discovered that this was no ordinary space. Instead of proceeding into the building's basement next door, the passageway instead angled downward, deeper into the earth and to the right. Eventually, after following this for three minutes or so, Fully under the spell of intrigue, I found that it opened up into a large chamber of sorts, at least twenty square feet with a high ceiling to match. The floor was dappled in small puddles of what looked like stagnant water, but it was what was in the center of the room that had me stock still with fear. There were bones. Animal bones of all different kinds, arranged in a circle-type pattern that had to be intelligently and purposefully placed in such a way. And in the center of that circle was one more skeleton, this one fully intact and much larger than the rest. More of the size of a large dog or small bear, but the skull appeared more like a horse's and the bull-like horns and jagged fanged teeth told me that it was neither. I had a strong sense of dread welling up inside of me, like I knew I should just turn and get the fuck out of there. So I did. But as I did so, the sound of something running, charging, on what sounded like four legs began emanating from another passage at the far end of the room, and whatever it was, it was running directly at me. I turned to go back the way I came, and no matter how fast I ran, it sounded like whatever it was that gave chase was gaining quickly. At some point, it must have stopped, for when I reached the basement where I had started, the sounds had ceased. There was nothing coming from that darkness before me. Still, I decided to barricade that entryway with old heavy boxes and a large oak door that I had found scattered within this basement space. I was terrified and was sure James would notice, but he didn't. James came back from break and asked me if I was ready to get back to it. I said nothing, nodded in agreement, and helped him finish that job as fast as possible. In fact, when we were done, I was packed and ready before James was, and just couldn't wait to get the hell out of there. I told him I'd see him at work the following day, and left him there to gather his things. James waved an acknowledgement and agreed that tomorrow was another day. That was the last I saw him. When I got to the site the following morning, the rest of the crew, ready to begin renovations in the building, was surrounded by police cars. Detectives didn't need to say anything. I already knew. James was found in pieces. Detectives were baffled because it looked like a wild animal attack. This made no sense to them, as we were in the middle of a metropolitan area with 
little wildlife. Never mind large animals. I didn't want to tell them what happened. I felt so guilty. But I insisted that they search the crossing spaces of that old passage. When they informed me that they did, I waited with bated breath for them to explain their incredible discovery. But he didn't. He told me that they found nothing. What about the bones? I asked them. And confused, the gentleman asked me to explain. I would have, but I knew he wouldn't believe me. So I just said I was asking about James's bones. He seemed a little perplexed, but this seemed to satisfy him and prompted him to tell me that the scene was too gruesome to elaborate, telling me if he had any more questions that we'd be in touch. And that we were. I did eventually tell the police about what I saw, what I had heard, but they didn't believe me, and as a result, I was the prime suspect for a long time. But eventually, when it was deemed an unsolved animal attack, my name was cleared, but forever tarnished by my ravings. But still, looking back, if I had said something earlier, something first, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Maybe James's wife wouldn't be a widow and his children without a father. I left in such a hurry. I didn't know that James had gone exploring as well, and without my warnings. The last thing he did, noted by police, was take down that barricade that I had constructed, and the next morning he had been found torn apart, in a way that no one understood or could explain. What was that thing? Where had it gone? What were those bones? I guess I'll never know. So, I suppose, no matter how crazy it sounds, you should always tell the truth. Someone else may greatly depend on it.